Hi, I'm Chris Rhoda with Trust Vino, and I'm here to say a few words about the Napa Valley, which is uh, a great place, one of the better places on the planet, not only for people, but for grapes too, and uh, primarily uh, the, the grape varietals. Uh, the thing about the Napa Valley, it's a tight little valley. It's only about 30 miles long, and it's about five miles across at its widest, widest part. But like many vineyards in the world, uh, they're always close to a body of water. You can go to the rivers of Bordeaux, the Rhone Valley, the Loire Valley. Uh, New Zealand has, is small enough that it's always affected by the maritime influence of the, uh, the oceans around it. So water and uh, the coolness of the water, the diurnal temperatures, which is the difference between daytime temperature and nighttime temperature, are critical for making great grapes. The Napa Valley is very picturesque. Uh, hills on both sides, vineyards, which is probably one of the most pretty, prettiest farming I can imagine. Um, and so it attracts a lot of people, but they all come from the wines. Particularly now, we're getting into the fall. <clears throat> they love to get caught up in the, uh, the romance of the, of the harvest. And it's, uh, just, it just in, in, involves all senses. I mean, the sounds, uh, the smells, when the uh, night air compresses the uh, the, the air to, to closer to the earth, uh, you get these heady aromas of fermentation. So this attracts people. Well, let's go back to grapes. At the base of uh, the Napa Valley, which is like an inverted funnel uh, over San Pablo Bay. Now, San Pablo Bay is a cold body of water. It's about 55, 58 degrees all the time. And the valley heats up uh, during the day. And it draw at the nighttime, it draws in that uh, maritime influence from the San Pablo, San Pablo Bay. So it cools that area off beautifully. So closer to San Pablo Bay, you have uh, the cool, loving varietals like Pinot Noir, uh, Chardonnay, uh, Riesling, uh, Gewurztraminer. Uh, they really enjoy the cool climates and the, that cold, crispy nights that they, uh, they do very well. It locks the acids in. Then as you move away and you get more in the center of the Napa Valley, then you start to find Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, grapes that, uh, Chenin Blanc, grapes that like the more warmer climate but still has that cooler evening. And then you get up into the apex of the Napa Valley at the base of Mount St. Helena. And then you get the warm loving varietals like Zinfandel, and Petite Syrah, and Syrah. So the Napa Valley is host and home to many, many varietals. And so uh, that's why there are such great wines and great wineries coming from the Napa Valley because it's just a great place, perfect for uh, the, the vines and perfect for the grapes. So also, Napa Valley was one of the first established, uh, settled uh, wineries. Um, and so as it, as it marketed the Napa Valley uh, around the, the United States and now around the world, uh, more and more people uh, knew about the valley, and so it became an address, it became an icon, and, and so it's always been in, in, in that vein that people just really, uh, really enjoy the, the Napa Valley wines. So it's, uh, it's a great place and uh, host to many, many grapes, and uh, it's, it's a romantic place, and uh, by the by, between Yachtville, which is a town just north of Napa, and Napa, which is a distance of maybe 10 miles, there are more Michelin star restaurants than any other place in the world. So that gives you an idea of the, the degree of people and the, and the kind of enjoyment that, uh, that focuses on the Napa Valley. So I love the valley. I've, uh, I've been up there, uh, well, I've been in industry for 60 some years. And so uh, I've just, uh, I always gravitate back to the Napa Valley. It's just a, a great place.